John here. So we've got um, a couple projects going on once, but uh, this uh, this this bathroom was just regrouted. Uh, so I, I scraped a lot of grout out. I got most of it out with a um, multi-tool, you know, and uh, I did damage some tiles here and there. But as I was uh, grouting, this section here was the same as that, as far as uh, the same tile. And uh, trying to get the grout on this didn't work out as well because this platform here is uh, cemented in. It was done right. This one is just right over plywood. Now this is a piece of um, cement board that I just cut to fit there and this, this piece here is just a piece of uh, PVC and I want to make the marble look on this as well as this, right? So uh, again, I got a lot of things going on downstairs that are do doing a kitchen over and I plan on doing some epoxy counters. Uh, so this is going to be a good practice piece. Okay, first of all, this is what the tile was uh, actually pl uh, mortared to with um, the original tile there it was just a regular subfloor. I got this little piece of underlayment here that I made uh, just to take up the gap in the tile. If you can see, right? Whatever that measurement is, turns out this underlayment uh, piece was was an exact uh, exact measurement. So I just fit it in there, right? And then uh, I'm going to uh, adhesive that down. And then that piece of cement board that you saw uh, was the same thing. I, I've got you know I traced this out and did the same thing. And of course that uh, that piece of PVC that I'm gonna uh, make like that went over that. I just wanted to show you uh, the steps I've done so far. So for this underlayment, I decided to uh, not only adhesive it underneath uh, plywood, the, the underlayment to the plywood, but also throw some screws down because this uh, particular area is, uh, you know, it's it's a shower area. So between the humidity and and wetness, I want to make sure this thing is not going to be you know, the adhesive underneath getting moisture under there and that sort of thing. So <clears throat> now did I screw it down. <clears throat> I use some uh, some of that uh, grout adhesive, uh, the one step deal and uh, grouted everything, all the nail holes and stuff and smoothed everything out. And uh, that way this underlayment part is, uh, is going to be sound. And then of course the cement board is going to go over it. And that part I'm going to have to adhesive down. Well, cement board is heavier, shouldn't go anywhere. Anyways, okay, so the next step I took uh, the bonding primer and sealer uh, and put two coats of that on the cement board and the PVC. And I also, once that uh, dried, I scuffed it up a little bit and put the um, two coats of the under epoxy uh, primer as well. So there's four coats of basically primer. Okay, so this is my first attempt in uh, using resin, and I uh, just watched some YouTube videos and, and how the stuff works. The stuff's pretty good, but this is, a, this is a practice piece really for me, for my kitchen counters that I want to do. But I uh, do in the bathroom here, it's just these two small pieces. So mixing up the A and the B, that's pretty straightforward. It's one-to-one -one mix, and uh, of course I, I mixed up way too much. I mean, basically for something, what I'm doing here is three ounces per square feet, and I only had like a three foot by three foot section but so I did mix up a lot of um, extra stuff but like I said this is my first time a little learning curve here and there and then uh, mixing the uh, th the three little containers with what I did was um, use some uh, just white dye and some white mica powder and then I added some uh, gray spray paint to uh, get a gray look but again, there's plenty of stuff on uh, YouTube on, on how you can uh, achieve some looks on these countertops. I'm just showing you what I did here. And uh, it, it did come out okay, but like I said, it, there's a learning curve. So this is what I wanted to do on this on these particular two items is get a little bit under my belt before I attack a kitchen counter, you know. Probably don't even need that much more. Same idea, after I mix it, I'm going to use the white mixer here. I'll change mixers for the black stuff. I don't think I'm going to use much, much of this black. I do want a gray. And again, I got some gray spray paint. We could do a fourth one. 
or just add the spray paint to this mix if it doesn't come out right. Either white, I got black, white, and gray spray paint. So, because I want to get this uh, this vein coloring right, try to match it as best I can to the original. I do want to save, I gotta save some for my little board. Yeah, you can see the contrast, at least I can. One's a little grayer. Saved a lot more of this stuff. I don't think I need nearly as much gray. I still got, <laughs> just had surgery. All right, so I'm just gonna mix this in with my hand. I was gonna use a brush, but I'm thinking just use my hand and taking some of these uh, colors. I wanna have this marbling effect. And I don't need to go over the edges, so I'm going to bring it to the edge, but all this is going to be, I uh, just want to keep that very kind of, I might need more. the same mix that I have throughout. piece too just because uh, I don't want to I just need to monitor on how much stuff I need so pour a little white over there with the white dye board I'm doing over here you probably can't see it, it's out of frame but um, this one has edges uh, that I have to cover just because um, uh, the, the edges are going to expose. These edges are not going to be exposed so I'm not worried about the you know doing the edges. They're going to be um, completely hidden. And I'm going to bring this material over to the edge. So I'm glad I've mixed up 48 or whatever we did because doing the math I don't think there would have been enough coverage just thinking but again this is my first time so I don't really have any gauge to go on other than what I'm looking at on videos and again 
and I seal it at dry spots. And then I'm sure this is enough. We're going to keep working it. Okay, so I just kept messing with this and I uh, just kept melting it with my hand. Um, it, you know, what I should have done, it, this piece comes out all right, don't get me wrong, but what I should have done, those gray stripes, I should have uh, took them right to the edges instead of just stopping short. Uh, you know, as you can see, they're just the three little lines. It does come out all right, but uh, so I just kept messing with this and add a little bit here and there. And, and basically what you see is what you get. Uh, the only thing, I, like I said, I, I would have changed is taking them gray stripes right from one edge to the other. But other than that, um, yeah, you know, and I'll, I'll get to the small board here in a second, but I, I just wanted to, you know, fast forward through this or at least, you know, tell you that this is about all I did here. That, that was it. So I'll, I'll get to the next piece. I'm going to show you what I'm doing over here as far as uh, I've got the white dye and the mica uh, spread out. And because the way this board is going to sit perpendicular, um, I want to go ahead and make it this way, like not exactly lines, but you'll see. This is my plan anyway. Nothing, uh, this is what I'm practicing on. Uh, man, I wish my shoulder was good. Um, so what I've got going on here is just, you probably can see, just the three little marbling stripes, but I'm not going to leave it at that. And because this is going to sit at a different angle, um, I just like like the way it looks right now. I don't want to really goof this up. I could probably use this as is, get some air bubbles out of there. stay away from veins but I do I do like this marbling look but I don't like how there's no marbling on the side so I am going to add a little, and these over here are kind of fading which is okay um, but I am going to add a little bit of um, touches to uh, make it like maybe in a corner here a little bit off on uh, you know we'll just follow this grain here a little bit go this way just going to use just a tiny bit. Let me come up with that. Maybe, maybe right here. Got some drops in there. Um, again, I don't want it to look too busy. I kind of like the way it's going. Because that has a drop. see what that does. I'm going to uh, go ahead and bubble that again. I'm going to work on that other piece over there on the right. So these are subtle gray, ve ve gray veins. I don't even know if you want to call them veins, but um, I've seen the technique for the sharp veins. I, I like it, uh, but in this application I don't want to do it because uh, I'm just liking the way this is. This is kind of melting in. I don't like this one, so we're going to keep that on low. I'm just going to try to blend this a little bit. Get a little wider. I think we could push it into the other one. If not, I'll take the glove and rest it up. I don't know if I'm that experienced yet to maneuver it how I want it. Just keep messing with that. Let's widen this one out, get a little darker. I don't 
okay with that. I want it a little darker. Just look a little fake. I'm okay with that. It's a little too dark, like right here, as opposed to in. Not sure we can do with that. Let me uh, work on this piece down here. I like how this has separation, a little white in between. Let me see if I can fatten that up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And you get sucked in, I'm telling you. I watch a lot of videos on people doing this and they always get sucked in. Uh, one more thing. Uh, one more thing. I should just leave this alone. I'm going to actually try some gray paint and darken these up a little bit. Um, but <laughs> I already know I should just leave this alone. I see a couple bubbles over there. Let me take care of them. This is going to have a clear coat on top of it, of just the resin, as well as the top coat. And I did buy the matte top coat just because um, I like the shiny look. Um, but what's going on upstairs, it's uh, matte. Uh, the, the original marble piece is matte, so I figured shiny and matte not going to look together good together. Even though the patterns are going to be different, it's going to look different anyways. I, just, I, I guess I'm going to go with the, I already bought it, the ultimate top coat matte finish. Um, but in the meantime, let's 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 fool around with this. <laughs> let's see if we can goof this thing up. Um, so I've just got this gray rust-oleum. It's actually uh, satin. It's not. It's coastal gray, satin. And again, this is a mistake. I already know this is a mistake going into this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm goofing up a piece that I like. I don't. Uh, what I don't like is it's turning too light. So I want to kind of darken that up get a line in there and we can blow it out. Uh, I know there's a way to get it out if you want to get it out, but I don't know if we need to get it out if we screw it up. So what I'm going to do here is um, just spray a little bit on this uh, tip here, right? Until it starts dripping. If it's dripping enough. Again, so I just want to come in here just draw a line, right? See, that might be too much on the edge. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> and just get this uh, this line back, and then we can um, we can drool it in later. Let's see if I can get some of this off of here. See, that was too much on the end there. I knew I shouldn't have messed with it. <laughs> so, in order to get that fixed, we're going to use some of this, uh, I guess, white mica. I got the wrong gloves on for this. And we'll just uh, we'll kind of push it off, right? Push it off. And we'll have to blend it in somehow. What we've learned on the other one is now we can maneuver this with uh, the heat gun. But I like how it's a little darker now. And it's also got a shadow. You probably can't make it out, but it's got a shadow here. So I'm okay with this. Let's see if we can fix it with some heat. I suppose the more you do this, the, the more you're going to know how, you know, 
when you go back and touch it, like I say, don't touch it. <laughs> but the more you do this, I'm sure you're going to figure out, uh, you know, how this is going to affect it, or, or at least know in your, your head uh, approximately how it's going to affect it. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay with experimenting, but let me get that little piece of crap out of there. Um, but I could easily mess this up. I actually, uh, I like it. It's a little darker. I don't think I'm going to do that over there because it, I, I just like that piece over there. So I might, now let's see how we can mess this up. Hit it with some alcohol. I've seen that done. I don't know what else I can do here. Uh, but now I like there's contrast. This is like a shadow over here from this. Uh, same thing. It's almost like, uh, I, I, I kind of like that. Let me let this sit for a minute. I'm going to hit it for air bubbles. See if this dissipates a little bit, blends in a little more on its own without without the heat gun. And then uh, maybe in a couple of minutes I'll uh, see how the, the stuff affects it. I don't want to really mess with it right now because I'm liking the way it's kind of looking. I like the way it's shaping up. I don't think uh, I'm going to mess with it too much. I sprayed a little bit more on here. I want to drag this down to the edge because I think a little bit of this edge is, is going to be exposed. So I don't like how it just ends there and just white. So we're just going to uh, go ahead and add a little piece here. Right, a little bit of color here. And that should uh, give it the effect. Right, a little more. Of, uh, you know, that it's real marble all the way through. I don't want to go too... I don't want to go too... Uh, too deep with it. That'll probably work. Get that top edge. Yeah, I think that'll work. This stuff's sticky. Alright, so it's the next day and there are uh, some things I see with this board that I was wor uh, concerned about. Not concerned, but you know, wondering about. Uh, this one came out pretty good. Uh, th there's nothing wrong with this one. This one here, it's hard to see with a camera, but I was wondering if the ripples in that cement board were going to be shown through and at first I didn't think they were because the color code kind of hit it but I don't know if you can make that out you can you can see it's with the micro uh, micro uh, the, the powder stuff that the glitter stuff that I can see um, some remnants of the cement board underneath now could I have went thicker with the uh, resin and that wouldn't have mattered I don't know I mean, how thick can you go? It would just run off the board. Um, but I thought I used a pretty thick, thick coat. I, again, this is my first attempt. But now I'm thinking the ultimate top coat deal will most likely take care of that. We'll find out. Uh, number two, it doesn't bother me in, in the least bit. Um, I mean, it's flat to the touch. You can't feel the ripples, but you could see them. And this is gonna. This is a, like a shower pan or a secondary shower. Uh, stepping out of the shower, so. I'm not too concerned with it as far as, um, you know, that you can get down and see because the lighting up there in the bathroom ain't that greatest anyway. You really have to get down here and, and really look hard to see those ripples. But let's see if this um, top coat will take care of that. It's a matte finish. Like, standing up here, I could see it better. I could see the, um, the ripples better. Again, to the touch, it's flat as board, but... Um, they are showing through and maybe because uh, and it's not everywhere it's just here and there um, so I'm not sure what to take it at maybe the different uh, paint maybe the cement board can absorb I don't know some you know I don't know I'm just guessing but let, let's uh, let's do the top coat see what happens so this ultimate top kit or ultimate top coat rather um, this is the bizarre part where our nice shiny <laughs> flat surface we're going to rough it up with uh, some sandpaper, which is just crazy, right? So this is some 220. Yeah, you could just tell it's rougher. I feel it's rougher. So as far as this top coat goes, I'm not sure, uh, every video I've seen, this stuff goes a long way apparently. So I'm not going to use a lot of it, but it is two parts of uh, this resin to one part of the uh, hardener. Alright, so I've got a couple rollers um, 
So after we mix this stuff up, I'm going to immediately start rolling this stuff. I'm going to pour this after it's mixed up into the paint tray and use this one as the wet roller. You have, you have to have a wet roller and a dry roller. We're going to basically put it all on with this and, um, and the dry rollers to take up the excess and also to reduce the, um, the lap marks. Try to get the lap marks out of there. So I'm just going to mix this part of that first. Make sure it's pretty mixed. And uh, I'm going to get right through this as soon as, it, as soon as I put it in. Now we already sanded and cleaned things up. And again, this is not a countertop, this is a, a floor basically. So I'm not too concerned with uh, contamination. I'm actually going to put, oh shit, let me, let me think about that. So this, uh, this stuff here I got for um, non-skid floor additive. It's saying directions, uh, blah, 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 broadcast one ounce per gallon by volume, and I don't even know where the hell we're at with ounces and whatever. Um, stone coat flooring ultimate top coat, or, so I don't have a flooring top coat. We're going to use the uh, the top, the ultimate top coat, and I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to sprinkle it into this uh, mix here. Again, it's my first uh, time, and I don't really, don't really care because of, uh, it's not a countertop, so... Actually, I could probably mix some of this in right now before the hardener ring. And again, I don't have no idea how much to mix. One ounce per whatever makes no sense to me. I'm just going to pour it in. And I don't care if it's like sandpaper. <laughs> because, uh, like I said, this is going to be a, something to step off with wet feet onto this glass surface. I'm thinking the more uh, granulars in there, the better. See with that light there. Usually I don't have enough light now. I need it dark. There we go. Two to one. Yeah, I have a feeling this is going to be way too much. Uh, but this is a learning curve for me. Making sure it's mixed correctly is a big part of uh, the curing process and and uh, you know future future things that may go wrong. It may be because the mix was not mixed correctly. So. I'm going to make sure, oh, and I also said add some water to this, which there's no water down here. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. I'm going to go upstairs and just uh, just to spread the water in there uh, to help thin it out a little bit. It's still pretty thick, but... We're just going to go with this. We're going to go with this. Again, we, we have to cover the whole thing, but we also have to take off the excess, so I'm thinking it's kind of a split in the middle deal. And I have such bad lighting down here, and hopefully I can see the lap lines pretty good. Oh yeah, we're, we're basically, we needed a third, not even a third, like a, <laughs> just wasted a half a bottle. Uh, but who knew, I didn't know how to, I mean, we already got the coat done, for Christ's sakes. Literally, don't need any of that. Uh, like I, I've seen so many videos say a, a little bit goes a long way. And you hear that, and you're like, yeah, yeah, I understand. But you kind of don't. <laughs> now, that kind of dulled things up. You can't see the gray too much, but I think it's going to clear up. Like I said, I've been watching a few videos. Stuff, uh, I might leave the camera on just to do a time lapse of... Uh, what it's going to look like. Alright, so let's get to the uh, dry roller and take off the excess. And this is not a countertop, it's a piece of flooring, so I'm not too concerned with lap lines. You're probably not going to see them. I don't know if you got to go this way. I'm going to go that way. I can't see any lap lines. I'm trying to, well, just vaguely.
All right, here's where we're at with this. Um, so these two pieces are ready to go. I am gonna, um, I don't, you know, as far as uh, securing them to the, uh, what I'm gonna do here is just do some blobs of, uh, you know, adhesive just for the cement board. And uh, before I do that, I'll, I'll just go around with a bead of white caulk, do the blobs of uh, adhesive, set the cement board down, and then afterwards go ahead and, and uh, do another bead of caulk just to make it waterproof and uh, like I said that's cement board so it's pretty much waterproof anyway but with the bead of caulk around everything twice I'm pretty sure that nothing's going to go anywhere and this little piece here as far as um, you know that's going to go on a threshold here that's just going to be uh, adhesive right down and that should do the trick that's the plan anyways uh, so let me show you this uh, I don't know if I pointed it out, pointed it out, but uh, and I, I don't know if we're going to be able to actually see this, but the yeah, there's no way we're going to see that. The finish on this is um, matte, but you probably can't make it out. But the the granulars came out really good there. It's like uh, somebody sprinkled salt across that, uh, so it's going to create, you know. Uh, traction or whatever I'm just trying to change the light a little bit but anyways it came up pretty good same thing with uh, with this piece it's all if you feel it it's it's really rough you know so when you have wet feet or whatever and you step on this it's got traction okay so here I'm just uh, throwing down the initial uh, bead of caulk uh, and then we're gonna throw also a, a couple of blobs like five blobs of um, construction adhesive Right, then we'll put the board down and we'll go back with the white stuff and, uh, you know, caulk around the edges once, one more time. Oh, yeah. Bump the shoulder. It's heavier than it looks. I'm going to bump the shoulder. So, I'm just going to go ahead and let her drop her in. Just use the old finger, the old finger wave. <laughs> and we'll clean that up. So I think here I'm just gonna because it's already in there. Use this uh, this cup down just to do a preliminary, right? Because we're gonna have to. Uh, do the same thing with a finger wave on that, but let's just get the, a bead going down originally. And it's kind of hard to pump out. I've only got one arm here. So we're just going to do a, uh, wow. I was going to say a little less speed, but very hard to pump out. So I think. I think we're gonna come down from the corner and right. Uh oh, she's a little bit tight. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna use our finger to get rid of the excess. No wave. We'll get all this stuff pushed in. And uh, I got way too much, way too much cut going on. So we'll just work on this. Okay, so we got everything put back together. Um, if I have to summarize anything, uh, so this this came out in my opinion good. Uh, so this piece here is the original piece of marble. And the first thing my wife said, why is that so different? 
And I agree, there's no way for me, for my first piece, uh, doing, you know, this faux marble stuff that I can actually mimic that. I guess uh, if I practice and practice, try to, there's a lot of stuff going on there, it's really busy. Now I think I'm going to, um, because the wife asked me, can we replace this with a piece of that? And I'm like, of course, we can use, you know, a piece of PVC and do exactly what we did there because now we have a little bit of experience. However, she also asked, can we just go over this and mimic that or something like this? And I'm like, interesting question. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think instead of uh, taking this piece out, this piece of marble, I think we're going to tape everything off and just do like, um, you know, just sand it up to do the exactly what we did with uh, actually this piece here uh, because it's smooth and I think I think we can do that anyways I think it looks pretty good I don't know I just uh, I'm just thinking my first time doing this uh, I've got a lot of ideas now <laughs> you know I'm gonna start resining everything I'm gonna put resin over everything maybe not my dog but over everything Alright, anyways, this project went pretty good. Uh, like I said, it's just a uh, practice session for the countertops that I g I'm going to be doing down in the kitchen. And uh, so that's all I got for this week. Uh, I'll see you next week. Uh.